Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeat.com. In, in the uh, last video that I made, we assemb I uh, assembled the saddle and attached the apron back to the saddle. And we were talking about these shims, that uh, there are shims under the uh, waist clamps on the front and the back of the saddle. And I said that, you know, if you bought a saddle off of eBay or somewhere, you know, because to replace yours or maybe you just want to check yours, that, uh, you know, you, you could figure out the amount of play. So what I've done is uh, I've set my dial indicator on the corner of the saddle at the front way um, <clears throat> and zeroed it. So I'll zoom in on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach under the saddle here and lift up to see how much deflection that I have. And that deflection obviously would be any space that exists between the clamp and the top of the ways or the bottom of the ways, you, you know, any space that might exist in there. So let me zoom in here a little bit. And hopefully I don't make you guys dizzy. So we can get a better picture of the needle. Okay, so you see, uh, hopefully from your point of view, you see that we're sitting on zero. So I'm going to lift up on the saddle and apron. And you see there's about five thousandths of play. So I know that there's about five thousandths of an inch space that exists between the clamp and the top's wearing surface of the um, of the saddle. Now, how much should that be? I really don't know, but I think that you'd want at least a couple thousandths of play in there. So you could uh, uh, move and check all four corners that way, both the front corners of the uh, front of the saddle to see how much you have this way and then the back corners of the back of the saddle to see how much you have in the back. Now the way I understand it as the chuck is turning and the tools feeding into it that there's a downward pressure on the saddle itself so I suspect that if you had a little play here it wouldn't matter the only place it would show up would be in the back. Now will that affect your cut? I really don't know. Now look guys I would um, I would go ahead and move this around and take measurements for you. Uh, but my dial indicator stand, it's uh, one of those little cheap Chinesium ones. And uh, I'll be honest with you, it's a, kind of a pain in the butt to set up. So I, I see why everybody likes the um, the Nogla, Nogla, whatever it's called. You, you know, the uh, single arm, uh, throw it in any old position, tighten one knob indicators uh, stands. Uh, so I'm going to have to see if I can put that on my birthday list or something. Um, so anyway, um, I'm going to set the camera up. I think while we're here, we're going to go ahead and install the cross slide and the, and, the, um, and the compound tool rest. So I will see you here in just a minute. Okay, guys, we're here at the, uh, at the saddle and getting ready to install the cross slide. Now the cross slide, really not much to it. Uh, you, have a, you have a brass nut and you have a gib. And uh, I'm going to slide the gib into place. Um, really, well, I guess we ought to lube this up, right? Get everything a nice coat of oil. I'm using uh, the bar and chain oil. And then, while the still a screw is still exposed, I'm going to give it a, another good little squirt of Twenty weight. All right, so I'm just going to hold this in position. I should be able to just slide this back and I'm going to uh, loosen the nut a little bit so it can move about and then just feed it on there. Almost painless, right? Okay. And then with the nut on the screw, I'll go ahead and tighten the screw of the nut. Okay, so the uh, cross slide's on in position. Uh, I'll need to adjust the uh, 
I'll need to adjust the Gibbs screws. And again, I'm going to refer you to Tubal Keen. Uh, he, he has a great video on adjusting Gibbs on the Atlas lathe, and I'll try to uh, I'll try to put a um, um, a card up so you know so you can link it. It'll be uh, up in the corner here somewhere. Um, but anyway, let's move on to the next part. So we have the uh, compound. Um, the compound slide with the uh, tool with the uh, you know to hold the tool post and inside there are two uh, pens with a uh, 60 degree bevel Let's see if you can see that they're just starting to stick up those those will catch underneath this bevel here and and uh, allow you to lock it down so again I'm gonna little oil. I don't think you can have too much oil. If you can, well, I guess I'll, it will just sling it out somewhere and get you. So, all right. All right, and then of course you got the two square headed bolts here to set screws or to, to lock it. So, um, I think the tool post wrench fits that, it does. All right, so there we go. The compound's in place. So, um, man, I tell you what, we're getting, I'm getting real close here. I'm excited about this. Uh, I have just a little bit that I wanna um, do to the tail stock because I haven't torn it completely down, at least the bottom part of them, just make sure that it's clean and, and look and see what's under there because uh, although I've had the uh, quill out and that sort of stuff, I, I just want to see how the under under bits go together, and, and I'll share that with you too. So I'm real close to getting this thing together and, and making some chips, and I can't tell you how excited I am about that. Um, now, you know, I've, I've, I know that I've said this over and over. You know, I'm not a machinist. I'm a computer geek, but I would like to learn some machining because I want to do something with my hands other than punch keys. So the interesting thing is, um, if I had a, a chuck to go on here, you know, I could do some diameter turning and some facing just to get comfortable. Uh, but instead, you know, uh, really I have a face plate. Now, um, I do have a three jaw and a four jaw chuck. Uh, they're new, they're Chinesium, so they're probably not the greatest ones on the planet, but I do have them and, and that should be good enough to get a beginner like me going. Except that I do have to machine the uh, back plates for both chucks. So um, that's that's one thing. And then the other thing is I bought a Bowstar AXA. Um, excuse me, and I'll just grab it. I did buy a Bowstar uh, AXA quick change tool post. Now, uh, this will... I have to have a, uh, a nut. This is the nut that comes with it now. My intentions are, unless uh, Richard decides he can help me out, is I'll take a hacksaw on a file and, or whatever it takes to get this nut to slide into this T-slot here so that I can bolt my tool post down. And then in addition to that, I'll because there's a step right here, um, rather than, you know, some folks have milled a place back so that when you turn the tool post, the corner clears. I really don't want to make those kind of changes to the lathe. Even though, um, I, as I understand it, if I put a piece of packing between the tool post and the top of the uh, casting here, then it, you know I'm probably introducing some more flex. But I guess if it becomes if it's too much of a problem, I can always come back later. Uh, I can take off, but I can't put on, right? So that's kind of where I'm at. So I need to uh, need to get my tool post uh, fitted, and I need to machine some back plates. Um, I would try some turning between centers, but I don't have any drive dogs, although I think I can make a drive dog out of just some square key stock, some half inch key stock or something, um, to turn between centers that, to try that. So I guess that's really about it for this video. I know it's kind of a short one. I just wanted to show how you could measure the, the, uh, play in the saddle, um, between the clamps and the ways. And like I said, I would have shown all four, but you know my my little indicator, Chinese indicator, is uh, not very friendly to s set up. So um, 
but hopefully uh, my wife will feel sorry for me, maybe, and <laughs> buy me one. So uh, I don't want to take any more of your time. Thanks for watching, and thanks for all the support and encouragement. I, I truly, truly appreciate it. And uh, in the next video, I think we're going to tackle, um, well, the tailstock. That's all that's left. So um, that's about all I have for this one. So other than that, have a blessed day.